second for one. A tough pickup from McNeil. Now everybody coming out of the dugouts. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Congratulations to minor league call-up umpire Jonathan Parra officiating his first MLB game today, and what a game it was. Contact floor for Holly. But first, everyone welcome back for this season, my friend, the Jumping Strike Zone box. Now that that's out of the way, before we get to the play at second, there was an obstruction issue at first. Check swing, throw to first. Oh, got him! He blocked the bag, says the runner. The question, of course, is, is this obstruction under the new point of emphasis for that rule? Let's do a quick recap on that. You'll recall the new point of emphasis on obstruction penalizes the fielders who use their leg to block the runner's return to a base, usually on pickoffs. Obstruction, the act of a fielder not in possession of the ball, non the act of fielding the ball, impeding the progress of any runner. Here's how it looks when it's called. Blocks the base. Umpire calls time, gives the runner their next base. Remember, the purpose of this point of emphasis is to go after those fielders who are using the in the act of fielding the ball defense to just stick their leg out and block the runner when they don't actually need to stick their leg out to field the ball. It's kind of like the catcher rule. So what we have here at first base in New York is that fielder sticking the leg because he needs to be there to field the ball? Or is he using the loophole in the rule as an act of fielding defense, even though he didn't need to be there? Remember, once you actually possess the ball, you are allowed to block. What tips the scales for obstruction for me is the fielder has his leg in the runner's path without the ball, didn't need to be there, as the runner is sliding. And the way that we do these things is it's not when the runner reaches the base, it's as they slide, because they need to pick their path sliding before they leave the ground, right? So if the fielder is obstructing at the beginning of the slide, yeah, that is illegal unless they have the ball or need to talk that pie that space to field the throw, neither of which happened at that time. Right down to third, a chance for two. Beatty to second for one. A tough pickup from McNeil on that clear now everybody coming out of the dugouts. Certain someone took, uh, McNeil took, you know, a excuse to, to my slide, but um, I didn't really think I, much of it, to be honest. I ended up hitting him, but that's what happens with the slow developing play, and we're trying to uh, make sure he doesn't turn the double play. The slide roll. Here's what the Mets broadcast said about it. I think letter of the law, it is a clean slide. Yeah. Yeah. Watch his left leg. It folds. This could have been a serious injury. You can understand why McNeil would be upset. This isn't McNeil's first time with a slide issue. Gets the out at second. The return throw by Kirk. The Braves are going to challenge that. Yeah, he's man. way off the base. Good job by McNeil. Absolutely good job by McNeil. McNeil playing for New York illegally slid into second base in that game. But for here, let's go through the list. There are four total criteria for bona fide slides. The first one is starting the slide before the base and we see that Reese Hoskins does satisfy that one. Next up is able in attempts to reach the base with their hand or foot, and it appears that that one is satisfied as well. Number three is able in attempts to remain on the base after completion of the slide, and we see that yes, the runner does remain on the base after completing the slide. That leaves number four, slides within reach without changing pathway for the purpose of initiating contact. And as we saw with Jeff Ning McNeil's illegal slide previously, that rule applies mostly to the lateral movement. There is no rule that says you can't slide past a base provided that you are able to remain on the base. So number four is satisfied as well. This is a bona fide slide. It is a legal slide. And as opposed to the dirty aspect of it, well, that's not in the rule book. The call is confirmed. There is no slide rule violation. Runner at second. And that's what wow. made McNeil angry. And you don't see it in today's game. I don't really have much else to be completely honest with you about it. Oh, but I do. This is the force play slide rule diagram that high school and college have. This is specifically college's rule book diagram. MLB and pro do not have this rule, so you won't see the call there. You have to slide directly and entirely between the bases. On this play, the runner's body was possibly half not directly between the bases, so you could theoretically have a violation of the force play slide rule for not being entirely between the bases. Your momentum, notice the white area, is allowed to carry you through as in an overslide provided that you maintain contact with that base. 
Thanks for watching. Visit us online, like, subscribe, Discord, memberships, and all of the other fun stuff. We'll see you online at closecallsports.com.